Hello, how's it going? Today, we're talking about the War of the Satyr, the Worgen, and some other stuff too. So let's go! The Satyr and demons were winning. The Night Elves were suffering terrible losses from the Satyr's assaults, but the captain of the Sentinels, Chandris Feathermoon, came up with a plan. Wake the bloody druids up and get the lazy buggers to help out. Malfurion agreed to help out after seeing how Zalan the Feared was corrupting the forests. He summoned the most powerful of his druid mates, and now the sentinels and druids were fighting as one. They struck into the heart of Satyr territory and managed to overcome many of their enemies, including Zalan himself. Whilst the Night Elves made gains in the war, a group of wayward druids were looking to harness the fury of Goldrin, the Wild God. They started shapeshifting into savage wolf forms. Led by Rila Fangfire, they decided to call their little wolf appreciation club the Worgen. They were slaves to their own rage and would basically just tear through anyone and everyone, friend or foe, amid battle. Anyone bitten by these Worgen would contract a curse that would transform them into Worgen as well. Because why not? Everybody loves werewolves. Malfurion wasn't a massive fan of the Worgen situation. He started to think that without regulation, druidism can be a bit weird. He couldn't just let people learn how to be a druid so that they could then turn into whatever they wanted and be a bloody menace. So he created the Cenarian Circle, an order that would watch over druids and just kind of keep an eye on their practices. Let's say someone decided to start hanging around Agamagan a lot, maybe started turning into a pig. The Cenarian Circle would step in and say, Oi, stop it, leave him alone. And the pig guy would be like, Oink. And the Cenarian Circle would say, You what, mate? Less of that. Get back with the others and stop playing around. Anyway, I digress. The Cenarian Circle's first task was to handle the Worgen threat. Malfurion saw no other option than to banish them to the Emerald Dream, so he reluctantly did. After the Worgen's banishment, the Night Elves cut deep into the Satyr's domain and cleansed most of the forests of corruption. The remaining Satyr retreated with their tails between their legs. Never again would they pose so great a threat to Night Elf society. 2,000 years later, the Highborn had been really trying to fit in with this post-sundering Night Elf society, but many of them struggled. They couldn't help it. Arcane magic was bloody irresistible, but there were strict laws forbidding its use. Every time any Highborn failed to resist the urge to use sorcery, they'd be warned, and the penalty for repeat offenders was death, and that's terrible. But they just couldn't stop. Dathramar's Sunstrider eventually turned around and said, Arcane power is the birthright of the Highborn. Anyone who fears its use is a coward, and they began using the arcane arts without a care in the world, basically daring the Night Elves to do something about it. The Night Elves were kind of startled by this outright defiance. They stood there wondering, what's all that about? But they couldn't bring themselves to sentence so many of their brothers and sisters to death, so they barred the Highborn from setting foot on High Gel ever again instead. Most of the Highborn were okay with this. They'd be free of all the Night Elves' rules and stuff. Under Dathramar's guidance, they built a fleet of mighty ships, and then they set sail, leaving Kalimdor. Their determination was rewarded some years later when they made landfall on a new continent. This region would one day become known as the Eastern Kingdoms. They travelled on foot for months before settling in a place marked by a strange silver hand. Tribes of primitive humans that inhabited the area referred to this place as Tirisfal. Initially, these humans mostly just kind of grunted at the elves, but after a while they started communicating a bit more, telling stories of a brave metal-skinned guardian named Tia and his sacrifice to kill a monstrous foe. The Highborn could sense potent lay energies in the land. This was no well of eternity, but the lingering supernatural presence intrigued them. They speculated that maybe, they could unlock its secrets and restore themselves to their former glory, and they were pretty desperate to succeed in this mission fairly quickly. Being separated from the Well of Eternity, many of the Highborn had already started feeling the effects of sickness and aging, and also they were shrinking, which is kind of weird. At first, they dwelled in peace and reveled in their independence, but as they tapped into the area's latent magic, they discovered dark energy, and these shadowy powers drove many of them to madness. They started claiming things like, those human settlements are right on top of the most potent ley lines in the region, so they should relocate, or we could just conquer them, because they're primitive anyway, so who cares? Dathramar didn't agree. He had no wish to war against the people who posed no threat. He'd also sensed the dark energies, and come up with a little theory that maybe it had something to do with why some of the highborn had gone mental. He chose to lead his people away from Tirisfal to avert violence and make a new home in the north. His scouts had discovered a region full of forests and powerful ley energies. So, the beleaguered Highborn struck out north and into the unknown once again. Dathramar himself had maintained a cheeky confidence ever since they'd left Kalimdor, and I'm not going to tell you why yet, because I'm a jerk. Meanwhile, back in Kalimdor, Malfurion and Tyrande worked tirelessly to maintain a period of peace and tranquility. In time, many fey creatures had returned to the wilds of Ashenvale. They'd been hiding in the Moonglade, and their return seemed like a good omen to the Night Elves. Malfurion spent most of his time in the Dream, so the daily governance fell to Tyrande. It was demanding, but she loved it. However, she couldn't help shake the feeling that dire times were ahead. They hadn't killed Sargeras. He was still out there, somewhere, plotting. 
It was only a matter of time before he renewed his burning crusade to decimate all life, and she just hoped that the Night Elves were ready for it. And we're leaving it there! So we're gradually setting up some stuff that will become clearer soon. For example, in the next video, the Highborn will reach their destination after a pretty difficult journey, and Dathramar's little cheeky secret will be revealed. So if you want to see that, make sure you're subscribed, you've got notifications turned on, and then come back on Tuesday. If you enjoyed this video, press the like button, talk to me in the comments. But all that's left to say is, thanks very much for watching, and see ya!